everybody. So this is Coastal Processes Continued. Um, we're on page 12 of your module booklets today. Um, coastal Processes begin on page 10 of your module and there's quite a few of them. So in yesterday's video we talked about erosion and weathering. Today we're moving on to mass movement and there's little space for notes on page 12 of your module booklet. Okay, so if you could turn there, that would be lovely. Um, so mass movement, here's a rather nice photograph of some mass movement here. It is something that happens on coastlines um, and it's quite an important thing that happens on coastlines. Sometimes um, part of natural processes, sometimes kind of encouraged because of human processes, um, but we'll talk all about natural versus physical in due course. Um, here is a, a slightly different angle of the same uh, landslide. So mass movement definitely happens on coastlines. What is it we'll get to, but I thought we would just uh, look at uh, some videos uh, and, sorry, and news stories. Now this is one quite close to home. Some of you might be quite familiar with this pub, um, the Blue Anchor, which is near Minehead. And um, it's having to shut down, or it's, sorry, it had to shut down because it was already quite close to the edge. And then can you see that huge crack that opened up there? Um, and it became sort of too dangerous, basically, for them to be able to continue. Um, so it causes all sorts of, of problems. And I've just got um, a couple of little bits to show you. Now, this one didn't um, kill anybody, thank goodness, but mass movement at coastlines does kill people. Um, it's killed people in Dorset quite recently, I think. And if you want to, um, if you access this PowerPoint, look, you can see loads and loads and loads of videos about mass movement on coastlines on the BBC. So oodles of things that you could watch uh, if you wanted to. This one is a little bit more dramatic. There's some screaming in the background of this one. Why they were filming at this point, no idea. Can't help you, sorry. Maybe they knew, maybe they were psychic. But you can just see the beginnings, look. And now clearly, if you'd been stood underneath that, things would not have ended particularly well for you. Luckily they weren't. And then this is just a bit of news footage about somewhere um, a little bit uh, close to home that you might know. Durdledore, Lulworth Cove, that part of the world. So I'm just going to show well, you the a coastal bit of path this. here, which goes between Durdledore in the west and Lulworth Cove in the east, is hugely popular with walkers. Today, a large stretch of it has had to be closed because of the cliff fall. As night comes, there's a sense of relief that it happened first thing in the morning before any walkers were using the path or the beach below it. Yesterday, these steps led walkers along the coastal path towards Durdle Door. Now, they lead nowhere. A 40 metre stretch of the coastal path fell away in this morning's cliff fall, which brought hundreds of tonnes of rock down into the bay below, obliterating the beach. One can only assume that the wet weather that we've had over the past 12 months have had a significant effect upon uh, the stability of the cliffs. And of course, what we're seeing now is uh, a drying period which will also upset the stability of the rock formations. It was the Coast Guard who raised the alert about the cliff fall. Dorset County Council, which manages the coastal path, quickly set up a diversion and closure notices. But even with those in place, they saw some people straying into the dangerous zone. Hopefully most of the walkers are, are adhering to the notices, but, but some unfortunately are not. So. The message is definitely to please take notice of all the signs and, um, and uh, keep yourself safe and away from the edge. There have been several landslips along the Jurassic coast recently. Last summer a woman lost her life when 400 tonnes of rock came down at Burton Dragstock. 
Swanage has also been affected by smaller landslips. The path at Durgle Door had been checked as recently as two days ago for cracks and warning signs. Walkers we spoke to said despite their concerns, they continue to visit the area. Yeah, we walked down to um, the Durgle Door arch there. Um, fairly steep, a bit out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. But not too close nice. to the edge. No, not too close. How concerned are you along the Jurassic Coast? Oh, very concerned. Yeah. The waves coming in rather quickly. Yeah. Especially this year, more than anything, isn't it? I suppose the wet uh, summer we had and that, it's not helped. Will it change where you go walking over next few days? Um, probably I would stick to the upper coastal path and not go down onto the beaches, that's for sure, yes. With the possibility of more cliff falls, everyone's being urged to be vigilant and use common sense close to the coast. Bryony Leyland, BBC South Today, Durgle Door. OK, so you get the idea that mass movement is... Um, quite dramatic, it kills people, it happens on coastlines. So what is it? Well you've got the definition on page 12, it's the movement of material under the influence of gravity, so stuff moves downhill because of gravity. And the most important thing, and this appears in year one and in year two, so there are kind of two reasons if you like to learn this, there are four types of mass movement. Okay, land slide. So you've got the definition on the screen that you can copy into your module booklets, but what I want to focus on is what I mean by the phrase internal deformation. So if you look at all the material that's moved downhill, you can see it's all jumbled up at the bottom. That's what we mean by internal deformation. The opposite of that is what's called a slump. So a slump is where you have a downhill movement of material but it stays intact. Can you see in both of these? The grass is still on top, the soil is still underneath. It is largely in one piece, it's just moved downhill. You can actually slump in a chair. In fact, you might get accused of slumping by various people quite a lot. So if you sit in a chair and you just kind of really relax, you slump. And what that means is all of your organs and things are in the same place, thank goodness, but they have moved downhill in your chair. Whereas in a landslide, everything is really, really jumbled up. Okay, so internal deformation you get in landslides, you don't get in slumps. If at GCSE you called these rotational slips, that's absolutely fine. It's the same, sorry, it's a name, a different name for the same thing. Rockfall, kind of tells you exactly what it is. Rocks fall, ha ha. Um, so these tend to be lumps of rock that just fall from the cliff. The picture on the right hand side is actually quite a significant rock fall. It could in fact just be one rock at a time. So landslides and slumps tend to be large masses of material, um, often aided by water. We'll talk more about water in a minute, whereas a rock fall is just a rock that falls from the cliff. Flows don't have a lot to do with coastlines, I'll be honest with you. Um, these are more associated with really heavy periods of rain where hillsides get completely saturated uh, with water and then you get this debris flow uh, or whatever coming downhill. So these kind of have, as I say, less to do with coastlines. So there are four types and what we really want to do is recognise the difference. Um, just a little couple of observations, we'll talk more about this in year two. Um, you can basically tell if you've had mass movement recently because the slope will not have any vegetation on it. So you can, even if I hadn't taught you mass movement, even if you'd never heard about it, if you looked at the photograph that's on the screen at the moment, it's kind of perfectly obvious that there's been some kind of of movement of material because there's a patch with no plants growing. So your giveaway clue as to whether you've had recent mass movement is this absence of plants, whereas if you've got hillsides that are covered in plants and trees, it would suggest they're not moving, okay? Um, but the other thing, water. Water was mentioned in that news clip that we watched. He said the 12 months of heavy rainfall probably had something to do with it. What water does is it makes the cliff heavier. So 
Um, if we go back to the definition, sorry, of mass movement, it's the movement of material downhill under the influence of gravity. One of the things that has a tremendous impact on that is how heavy things are. Water will make material heavier. So if you've had a really heavy rainfall event, a really heavy, um, sorry, really heavy rainfall for the winter, you are much more likely to see mass movement at those times. The other thing that water does is it acts as a lubricant. It reduces the friction, and so you can equally uh, see lots of mass movement, i.e. in the United Kingdom, it's much more likely in the winter. Okay, but the other thing I want to do in this is I want to begin to get us to think about how do all these coastal processes fit together. Now we talked about the first bullet point yesterday, weathering weakens rock and makes them easier to erode, a nice bit of alliteration there, weathering weakens rock and makes them easier to erode. How does mass movement fit in? Well, erosion obviously is caused by waves and waves are going to attack the bottom of your cliff. So if I can just come back to this one, if your waves are attacking the bottom of the cliff, that can lead to what's called overhang. So you've got rocks up here that are not being held up by anything anymore. So coastal erosion at the bottom of cliffs can encourage mass movement above them. So that's one thing. And the other thing that happens is mass movement will completely change the appearance of your coastline. Let's go with that one. In the few seconds or minutes that it took for that um, mass movement to happen, you can see that the whole appearance and shape of that coastline is completely different. And what's going to happen is that all of that material will slowly get eroded by the sea. So mass movement also provides material that will go into the system. Now we're going to revisit systems once we've got to the end of all the processes. Okay, so what you should be able to do now is um, name the types of erosion and describe them. Describe weathering and explain how weathering and erosion fit together. And sorry about the phone call. Um, and also be able to know the different types of mass movement and how that relates to everything else. All right. The next video that we're going to do is I'll shut the door so we can't hear my husband's phone call. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> this is the trouble when you've got too many people trying to work from home. Um, so. We'll do transport and deposition in the final video, and that will be the end of coastal processes. What I want to finish this video talking about is people have asked me about um, notes and work and proof. I will trust that you are taking notes and following along with this. When we get to a point where you could answer a question or do things, then yes, of course, I'm going to set questions for you to do. By this point, it would be fantastic if you could have done one or both of the worksheets I mentioned uh, and emailed to you, and also if you could have done the coat, which runs out next Monday. So you've still got the best part of a week to tackle that coat. So worksheet and coat, as soon as we uh, get to the end of processes, we'll be in a position to think about a question. Uh, but just keep taking your notes as you would in class um, and when we get to a point you can do some work for me to check. I promise that will happen. Okay, sorry about the uh, few little interruptions today. <laughs> That's just crazy life at the moment um, and see you again to finish processes tomorrow.